Shut up, Smarks. Bring Ross Redux. No, I won't tap out. I won't tap out. All of you butthurt suck. Just stop watching Raw. Stop watching Raw. So now time to get into the paper review of WWE Extreme Rules on the WWE Network from the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. There are seven matches. There were six, and they added a pre-show like I said they would. I don't know if I want to count that towards my successful prediction rate, but we'll see, I guess, if I really, really need it. If I really need it to up my average or whatever. So, uh, in the pre-show, Kalisto defeated Apollo Crews uh, in just under ten minutes. So, you know, it was an interesting enough match. Uh, I saw the, yeah, I saw the pre-show. Unfortunately, I don't have the network, and here in Canada, you need cable. You need to have Rogers Cable in order to have the WWE Network, and it's only what's streaming. It's only the streaming portion of the of the network, which would still get me the pay-per-views, and NXT, and uh, 205 Live, and all these shows. It would get all these shows, but it would get a bunch of good shows. But I wouldn't have access to the archives, which... Ironically enough, when I did have the network on a wink-wink, totally legit means, I still paid for it. I paid them. Th- I I paid them their ten dollars, so they got their nine ninety-nine. It's just I had to tell them I was in the U.S. in order to do so. So they got my money. They're still emailing me saying, "Don't miss out. You know, your subscription has expired." I'm like, yes, it did. Expired because I allowed it to expire because I didn't want it anymore because I wasn't really using it to its full extent. So I know a number of people in this city who have the network with varying degrees of legitimate reasons why I can't come over and watch any given pay-per-view with them. But uh, most of them are work or they live an in insane distance away and they would feel compelled to drive me back. Even though I've walked, I walk a lot. Especially now that the weather's getting better. I, I, I mean, I've walked from anyone who's familiar with the uh, St. John's area. I've walked from the Avalon Mall area where I live to Stavanger Drive. That's almost, looks like an hour and a half, two hour walk. I'm not afraid of walking. As long as the weather's not bad, I mean, as long as it's not in the middle of winter, I'm not opposed to walking. So, Callisto defeated Apollo Crews wasn't a phenomenal match, but it's, I'm not sure what they're aiming for with this. Titus O'Neil seems to be looking to uh, expand his uh, Titus brand into the international markets. He's going after Akira Tozawa and probably also Kalisto, but I never really noticed. So I wasn't really paying that close attention, so probably. Anyway, not really much to talk about. I didn't predict it because it wasn't... You know, it wasn't advertised when I previewed the show last week. So, you are listening to Ring Rush Redux on Gerbronology TV. Pardon me while I make the sound of putting a CD away, because we still use CDs here. You know, it's not a big deal, just how it is. You know, any almost any radio station probably has... Pretty much every radio station, I should imagine, has CD players because artists drop off CDs because it's a convenient medium. Well, it's an even more convenient medium, I suppose, is emailing MP3s, but, you know, the radio station then has to import those MP3s onto their computer system to play the songs. So, and they have to listen to it, and anyway, there's usually someone, a program manager, usually, who listens to the CDs and sees that they're ready for suitable for airplay, and usually they are, fingers crossed, and then it all works out. You get your CD out there, and a band, a radio station plays it, and you get more notoriety and stuff. And anyways, that's how things like that work. In case you were curious. Anywho, so back to the uh, WWE Extreme Rules paper re- review. On the WWE Network, 
So next we have The Miz defeating Dean Ambrose to win the Intercontinental Championship. Had Ambrose been disqualified, he would have lost the title as well. So The Miz convinced Maurice to slap him so that, you know, Dean Ambrose would get disqualified because of, quote, obvious interference, unquote. And uh, she got evicted from ringside, though. Uh, in the end, uh, The Miz shoved Ambrose into the referee, who considered disqualifying him, but, you know... While Dean was distracted, uh, Mizanin performed a skull-crushing finale to win his seventh Intercontinental Championship. So, like him or hate him, you know, the guy knows how to win titles, usually. I mean, he's not going to win every single title match he's in, but, you know, not no one wins every single title match they're in. Because there are people who have had title matches who aren't currently champions. Say what you want about John Cena and uh, Roman Reigns and... All these people who don't seem to lose kicks out a two LOL. Where's my girlfriend? Oh, right. I'm too busy complaining about wrestling to get one. So, well, complaining about something you have 100% control over whether or not you watch sounds kind of stupid. But hey, maybe you're a lot like Miz that way. Maybe you just came to play. You're listening to Ring Rush for Ducks on Gerbronology TV. Coincidence, I'm sure. This is Fabulous Mark Gerbroni. You're listening to Ring Rust. Until next up, from WWE Extreme Rules on the WWE Network, uh, saw a mixed tag team match which pitted Golden Goose, Rich Swan, and Sasha Banks. Well, because Rich Swan is just golden in the ring, and uh, Sasha Banks is a nice bum. Versus serial datist, Noam Dar and Alicia Fox, because Alicia Fox seems to be making her way through 205 Live. And dot, dot, dot. The match ended when Swan performed a Phoenix Flash on Dar to win. That was quite the sight to see. And, of course, the, uh, uh, Rich Swan and uh, the boss started dancing to uh, Rich Swan's theme song. But, you know, I bet you they could have done a a nice bit of soft shoe to Sasha's own theme song. You are listening to Ring Rust Redux on Gerbronology TV. Yes! Yes! Mind taking! Stick with the kid, baby! And now, if I can just lure Birdman to my secret spot. <sighs> Could you watch my death ray? So, uh, next up for Extreme Rules on the WWE Network for this paper review. I don't know if people, maybe, when they see, when I type a paper review on the various pages that I post uh, advertising the link for listening to the podcast, when I put in the term paper review, hopefully people don't think they had to pay for it to listen to it. be interesting, I guess, if they, anyway, if that's what people thought, but hopefully it isn't. So, I mean, it's just, it's... Both pre-per-view and pay-per-review are takes on the term pay-per-view. A pay-per-view that I'm previewing, I'm pre-per-viewing it. And a pay-per-view that I'm reviewing, I'm pay-per-reviewing it. Because I'm just putting the re in view and making it pay-per-review. So, anyway, so uh, after that, we had Alexa Bliss defending her Raw Women's Championship against Bailey in a kendo stick on a pole match. So, uh, it got down and dirty with the kendo stick and... Both of them were lacing into each other, which was kind of confusing because only one of them was legally supposed to be able to use a kendo stick. But head scratch. And uh, after some hellacious poundings from Alexa, she uh, did a snap DDT on Bailey to retain her title. And uh, pictures that uh, Bailey posted via her social media showed quite hellacious scars, uh, quite quite some some boo-boos that she had on her back. Hopefully her fiancé, Kisten, made better when she got home. Did you see what Alexa did to me? Oh, come here. I'll give you some hot chocolate. So, wrap you in a blanket. Make you, make you into a... Uh, what is it they call it? Did, was it that meme on the, on the, on Facebook? Make you, in, make you into a sushi? A person sushi or something? Roll you up in a blanket and... I don't know. Whatever. Hopefully... Is, uh, well, she seems okay. She was wrestling after that so she's obviously not 
too banged up, I suppose, but uh, all the same. Anyone uh, who's an Alexa Bliss fan, I'm sure, instead of feeling spiteful like they would have felt had Bailey had won, they ended up feeling just, just sort of blissful. You are listening to Ring Rust Reducts on Gerbronology TV. This is 93.5 CHMR FM. Macho Man, what time it is, he always says two seconds to. After you ask two seconds to what, the top rope elbow drops you in the face. And Randy Savage built a time machine and went back in time to stop the JFK assassination. As all of Oswald shot, Savage met all three bullets with his beard, deflecting them. JFK's head exploded out of sheer amazement. on Facebook, tinyurl.com slash rayrust. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Gibroni and subscribe to Jarbronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Gibroni. So next up from WWE Extreme Rules on the WWE Network, the Hardy Boys defended their Raw Tag Team Championships against international powers Cesaro and Sheamus in a steel cage match, which could only be won if both members of the team escaped the cage. In the end, Jeff performed a whisper in the wind off the cage to both Sheamus and Cesaro. As Matt attempted to pull Jeff through the cage door, Sheamus and Cesaro climbed and narrowly escaped the cage before the Hardys to regain the title for a second time. This is also the Hardy Boys' first loss since their return at WrestleMania 33. Similar, I guess, to Asuka. They had a little bit of an undefeated streak. Not as impressive, of course. So, but anyway. Well, there's only so much you can do with a with really an undefeated streak, I suppose. So, so uh, yeah. Congratulations, International Powers, for uh, regaining their titles and uh, doing what they said they were going to do. Make the Hardys obsolete. Tee hee. You are listening to Ring Rush Reducts on Gerbronology TV. Meet my friendly knuckle. I'm a hemophiliac. Ha! <laughs> You're as dumb as I am. Mmm, uh. brunt. So, uh, next up from uh, WWE Extreme Rules on the WWE Network, uh, we have the panel. Ultimate match, which saw Neville defending his WWE Cruiserweight Championship against Austin Aries, the man that Gravity forgot previously. He hasn't doesn't really do all uh, as much high flying anymore, but you know, performed a red arrow on Aries' back and forced good old A Double to submit to a Rings of Saturn to retain the title. Yeah, I'm not really disappointed that Austin Aries didn't uh, win that one, but apparently Austin Aries himself was because he posted to Twitter saying that he has to uh, reevaluate what he's doing. So, where are we going? What are we going to? We're going to see him in NXT. We're going to see him uh, move up to the main roster, move on to the main roster maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll just go back to announce go back to commentating. I wouldn't mind that certainly at all. Who knows? Maybe he'll uh, he'll be transferred over to uh the uh United Kingdom show whatever that's go- whatever whatever that is, whatever that's going to be called. So, Still kind of nice to see Neville break orbit, I guess. Like 
me on Facebook, tinyurl.com slash rayrust. Follow me on Twitter, at Mark Jabroni. And subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Jabroni. Cluing things up for WWE uh, Extreme Rules on the WWE Network. Uh, with the main event, it saw Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, Finn Balor, and Samoa Joe competing in a fatal five-way Extreme Rules match to determine the number one contender against Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at Great Balls of Fire. You heard me. They have an upcoming pay-per-view called Great Balls of Fire because they couldn't bring back the Great American Bash. Nope. Couldn't do that. No. No, we need to make up something totally new and have it be kind of stupid and based somehow on the 50s and how great that was for people who weren't white. But anyway, um, after Wyatt and Joe attacked Reigns and Rollins, speaking of guys who weren't, anyway, with the steel steps, uh, Bray uh, performed a DDT on Rollins on the steel steps. So I'm just going to skip to the end of this now. Uh, Rollins performed a frog splash. On um, on Wyatt through an announce table, Finn performed a coup de gras on Reigns, but as Balor attempted a pin, Joe applied the Kakina clutch, and the inaugural uh, Universal Champion passed out, giving Joe the win by technical submission, and becoming the number one contender for Brock Lesnar's Universal Championship at Great Balls of Fire. And of course, he made great effect. He uh, brought that to great effect on the following night on Raw, when he came down to the ring. When he was out in the ring calling out Bray, uh, Brock Lesnar, and then Paul Heyman came out, and he decided, you know, I'm going to get Brock Lesnar's attention by beating up his advocate, which is what everybody does, because it's only his advocate who's ever really there. So, not ever, I guess, but you get the idea. So, be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, now, on to my predictions, actually. I realized about halfway through the show I haven't been giving you my predictions as I normally do. So I didn't predict the pre-show match because it wasn't advertised. So depending on how I want to go with it, we'll say we'll say yes. I, I did predict there was going to be a pre-show match, so we'll say yes. Fine. Uh, the Miz versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. I did predict Dean Ambrose would find a way to win, so I got that one wrong. Uh, next up, Rich Swan and Sasha Banks versus Noam Dar and Alicia Fox. I did predict that one because it seemed like a send the fans home happy kind of match. So that's probably why they did it. Uh, Alexa Bliss versus Bailey. I did predict that one as well. I did predict that the Hardy Boys would defend their titles successfully, so I didn't get that one right. I also predicted that uh, Austin Aries would win the title from Neville, but I didn't get that one right either, and uh, there's even more implications for Austin Aries' future, so it plays into a more interesting storyline anyway, I guess, see where Austin Aries is going to go from here. And I did, like, probably somewhere in the high 90s, in the percentile of the uh, WWE Universe who were watching this match, I predicted Roman Reigns was going to win it because it seemed like WWE wants Roman Reigns to win all the titles that he goes after. So it's a bit surprising that Samoa Joe won it. Not disappointingly so, but surprising nonetheless. So congratulations to all the winners, and um, let's just uh, play it out, I guess. That's it for another show, kiddies. Check me out on Facebook, where you can keep track of all the news that's right on the mark. From around ringside to the latest concerts. See you at the shows. Later days. This is 93.5 CHMRFM.